This is really, to me, the fun part of trading and exploring what is out there. And, uh, you know, I can't wait. Today, we are kicking off a brand new series of educational events around foundational strategy development and trading. I'll be joined by my colleague, Tom Snyder, who's also has a lot of experience in this area. Tom, thanks for joining me. Mike, it's, it's my pleasure. And you're right. I've done a lot of backtesting, a lot of strategy creation and analysis, all that good stuff. To me, it's just a natural progression of looking at charts, looking at data, looking and seeing how the market works. And once you get an idea of, you know, this, I, I noticed something, you want to test that out, right? You want to see how would this have done had I acted a certain way when I see this set of requirements or conditions, whatever you want to call them. And with the Ninja trader platform, you can actually put those ideas into the chart and take out of the chart how you might have done, right? Gives you a little bit of sense of how you might have done as a trader. You know, when I came to this, it was print out the data, right? Export the data to an Excel spreadsheet. And maybe you were smart enough to mark in the spreadsheet where you had a condition fulfilled. And then you would have to go by hand to see, okay, I would have bought here. What was the price? Okay. When would I have gotten out? It might've been many lines later in the spreadsheet. Now I have to calculate the difference. Was it positive? Was it negative? Very time intensive, right? And this is just, you know, speeds so many things up. It's worth putting the effort into learning how to do it because that investment in time to do that pays much more in dividends on the other side of that. This will be a course that might be a little dense in information, but it certainly takes your trading understanding to the next level and it's worth it. In my humble opinion, I totally agree with that. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the overall process. How do you start? What are the different things that you do to get to that automated strategy? Right. So with NinjaTrader, it's fairly simple. It's a daily chart. You could start with five minutes. You could start with a weekly, but we're starting with a daily. It's as simple as right-clicking in the chart to get the menu. Now you might be used to using this right click to put on indicators or change your data series, right? But there's one that's right underneath indicators called strategies. Strategies are kind of enhanced studies, right? If you've never used this before, you'll see four sample strategies. Now Mike has created his own, so he has some extra. But these four strategies that you see start with the moving average crossover. That is a basic interpretation of moving average. And I mean that in a, in a primordial sense, not a simple sense. And all you really need to do, you need to hit add. You'll see inputs on the right side. They are fixed right now because they are a sample, but you can change the elements of the strategy. Basically, this is a, a moving average cross strategy. So when the fast moving average crosses over the slow that it's going to go long. And when the fast moving average crosses below the slow, it's going to go short. You can adjust those two moving averages to whatever lengths that you want to test. You can even optimize them to see which ones would be the most profitable. Right now, for example, I just want to look at a, a simple three bar moving average crossing over a 10 bar moving average. I'm using smaller numbers here so we get a number of trades on the chart. Exactly. Remember, we're testing over data that has already happened. This is data sitting in a database. We have to tell the software what kind of data are we pulling in. Also, you have to tell it how far back to go. So let's put the strategy on the chart first. That's a great point. Let's put the strategy on and it's going to blanket it onto the entire chart. And then we can adjust the data that's in the chart once the strategy's there. Here's the, the, the tricky thing. Yes. Most important thing, you may want to make a note of this. When you apply a strategy to the chart, most important thing to do is click the enable button here. If you put the strategy on the chart and there's no trades, chances are you did not check this enable button. Click apply and click OK. In this case, the sample indicator also puts the indicator on there so we can actually test to see if the trades are happening when we expect them to happen when the moving averages cross. If you hit enable, it, it locks it all down so it can throw it onto the chart. It locks it in because when we do other things with it, such as analyze the data, we want to make sure that our chart is looking at the same results as we would when we actually pull the data out and we have another view. So we'll get into that a little bit later. What's interesting here, it not 
not only puts the studies on there, but it also turns on the text feature of the chart. So the text labels where the trades were taken in the test itself. This isn't where you actually traded most likely, but this is where the sample strategy would have taken trades and recorded as if they were live had you followed along live as the data happened. So that's a cool feature here. So once you have the strategy on the chart, you can watch the strategy evolve over time in real time. This is a daily chart. So it only updates once a day, but on an intraday chart, this would be updating as each new bar occurs. So again, this strategy is a reversing strategy. We talked about that. It goes long and short. There's no other exit criteria. There's no other risk management. It's simply a simple test showing you where it goes long and where it goes short as those moving averages cross. That's a good point. Each trade, because, you know, really you're trying to replicate what would happen in real life. And so when you go long, you're closing one position, let's say a short position, and then you're opening another by going long. So you actually have to go long twice. So that's why in every instance you see text here, you actually have two trades going on because it is a stop and reverse system. You're getting out of one trade, you're closing that position, and then you're going into another trade, whatever that direct the, the system will tell you. It'll either buy or sell, but it'll enact that trade at the same price as the close of the position. So it truly is a stop and reverse as it's set up right now. Here we can see more clearly the green line there is, is the slow moving average and the golden rod is the fast moving average. So that's the three, this is the 10. And you'll notice that here, that golden rod is crossing above the green. So this is the trigger bar, well, let's call it that. This is the bar in which the cross occurs. When that bar closes, it generates a market order to be filled immediately. The first opportunity for that market order to be filled is the open of the next bar. And so there you can see a little blue tick mark at the open of that little red candle. That's where we bought. And that is where we also bought to close the short. So Tom was right. Two orders go in and reverse the trade. You know, it's important to remember crosses generally happen between bars. The only time you'll see a cross happen on a bar really is when the moving average values are equal to each other on that bar. But if it doesn't happen on that bar, it'll happen between bars. So it might look like our entries and exits are kind of, you know, a little bit farther away from where we cross. But really, Mike's point about we execute after we confirm a cross. That big red candle that or green candle that Mike pointed out, that's not confirmed until the the end of the day, even though it was a big bullish candle and we know probably this will cross, anything can happen. This candle could have turned around and we could have uncrossed. We could have not have crossed yet. So we have to wait for that confirmation candle to finish before we even think about taking our trade on the next candle. The bar must close. And once it closes, it evaluates the strategy to see if any orders or any conditions are true that would then be processed and executed on the next bar. So yes. that's, that's but it, this could be a minute chart and it could be calculating intra bar. There's a lot of functionality here that we have to cover, Tom, over the next few segments. <laughs> I agree. Let's look at the performance of this chart, Tom. So all of the trades that we have in the chart here, if we, if we just kind of scroll back, you can see all of these trades that occurred throughout the chart. Again, all of the trades here are compiled into a, a pretty comprehensive performance report. You right click on the chart. And right below strategies is strategy performance. You can have multiple strategies applied to the same chart. That's why there's this little dialogue to the left here. We only have one. I'm going to click on that and click historical. And this will give us the performance of all of the trades in the chart. It shows you all trades combining the long trades and the short trades. And it breaks out the short trades and the long trades from each other. Here you can see that the long trades in the E-mini on a daily chart are well outperforming the short trades. And, and that's pretty easy to understand. And it even breaks down the long trades in profitable and not profitable, which is an interesting comparison. It's easy for us to understand what's going on here because we've been in an uptrend since October of 2023, maybe a little bit low, maybe October 2022. If we're looking back a year, that takes us past October of last year. So if you're in an uptrend, you would expect long trades to do better than short trades. It's that whole idea of trading with the trend versus contra trend trades. But it also, if you don't know that, if, if it's a new market to you, you want to test your strategy on a market that's un, unknown to you, or if you're looking at different time frames you're not as familiar with, this can give a good sense of, well, this strategy does well on both the long and the short side, or maybe it's just the short side. Well, now I want to see if we're in a downtrend. The idea of how well it does with its winning 
winning trades and it's losing trades in one direction is a pretty neat feature. A picture is worth a thousand words, Tom. And, and I always look at the equity curve. So the equity curve really kind of tells you how this strategy is performed over time. Every strategy is going to have some drawdowns, but is it consistently making profits over time? That's really kind of what we're looking for. And that's what we're seeing here for the most part. And again, I, I want to point out, and I think you'll agree with this, Tom, that a strategy doesn't have to be long and short. If you're in a particular environment, a particular market where you only want to go long, that's a valid strategy. If you only want to go short, that's a valid strategy. Really, you can tailor your idea to the market that you want to trade. This isn't the way that people trade. They don't trade long, short, long, short. They find a setup and a filter and a trigger and they go long and then they manage that trade with maybe a, a trailing stop or a profit target or a stop loss. And those are the kind of elements that we will talk about in our next episode is what makes up a trading strategies, entries and exits, trade size rules. And we'll talk about different ways that you can build those rules and best practices on developing a strategy. This presentation is for educational purposes only. All of the symbols, trading ideas, and live trading are for demonstrational purposes and are not recommendations or trading advice. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. All of the information and opinions expressed by third-party guests are their own and are not necessarily those of NinjaTrader, LLC. Trading futures involve substantial risk and may not be suitable for everyone, and trading futures can result in losses greater than the initial required margin. Traders should only trade futures with risk capital. Risk capital is money that you can afford to lose without jeopardizing your financial security or current lifestyle. You can find additional disclosure information on the NinjaTrader website.